Hey there, time for another video. Uh, in the spirit of Halloween, which is uh, coming up soon, I thought I'd do a video on uh, monsters, monsters that appear in mythology. Um, if you really like your monsters in your stories, uh, a great place to start would be ancient Greece. Uh, Greece doesn't have a, does not have a shortage of of monsters. Uh, you probably already heard of a lot of them. There's, uh, there's of course, Medusa. Uh, Medusa was this, uh, she was one of three sisters called the Gorgons. And uh, Medusa was the only one that was mortal. The other two sisters were immortal. And uh, of course, these three sisters had snakes for hair. And if they, if they looked at you, and you, you look back at them, they, uh, they turn you to stone. Uh, so, uh, Medusa was, uh, was, uh, slain by the hero Perseus. Uh, he was given a shield where he could see her reflection, but without looking directly at her, and he was able to cut her head off, and uh, he went around turning whoever he didn't like into stone with the head of the head of Medusa. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so that's one, that's one monster. Uh, there's another monster known as uh, the Chimera, uh, who was an interesting monster. It was a, a, a composite of different animals. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes monsters seem to be nothing more than composite of different animals. Uh, the chimera was a combination of, uh, of a lion, a goat, and a snake. So, uh, this monster was killed by the hero Bellerophon. Uh, what happened is that he caught and tamed, uh, the flying horse Pegasus. And, uh, by flying on Pegasus, he was able to rain down arrows on Baler on the, chi the chimera and killing it. Um... Uh, a great a great collection of stories that have quite a few monsters is actually the Twelve Labors of Heracles. We know Heracles also by his Roman name, Hercules. Uh, Heracles performed these Twelve Labors that if he succeeded, he would become a, immortal. So uh, he performed these labors while he was uh, under the uh, while he was a servant of this uh, king named Eurystheus, and uh, a lot of these labors have to do with uh, performing heroic deeds, uh, mostly capturing and or killing monsters. Uh, my favorite is the, the second labor of Hercules. Uh, the second labor was he had to kill the Lernaean Hydra. Now in ancient Greece, there's this place called Lerna. And uh, Lerna was known as being uh, uh, swampy. And there was this, 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 this creature that lived there. Uh, he was ac it was actually a, uh, a type of uh, gnawing headed uh, dragon type creature. And um, uh, you probably remember the name Hydra from biology class. It's that little, you know, microscopic uh, creature that is related to jellyfish. It has a little cylindrical body with the mouth on top with a little ring of tentacles around it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so this Hydra had nine heads. So Hercules, uh, Heracles walks up to him and he, he fights with a club. And, uh, and he started knocking heads off the Hydra. The problem is, is that every time he knocked off a head, two more grew back in its place. And not only that, but the Lernaean Hydra had a little friend. Uh, it was a crab, and the crab kept interrupting Heracles' fighting by nipping at him. So Heracles said, well, I'm, I'm not getting anywhere with this. So he walked away. He came back with a companion named Yolus. And uh, with the help of Yolus, uh, keeping the crab at bay, uh, Heracles started uh, knocking the heads off, uh, knocking the heads off again. Uh, only this time he had, he had fire with him. And uh, what he did was, uh, as soon as he knocked off a head, he cauterized the stump with the flame, and uh, by cauterizing it, uh, no more heads were able to grow back. So this stopped any more heads from growing. But there was still a catch. The Lernaean Hydra still had one more, one more trick up its sleeves. One of the heads uh, was immortal. So once you cut it off, it wouldn't die. It would just, I guess, keep snapping away. So what Her Heracles did was he had to uh, bury it deep in the ground with a big rock on top. And uh, it, it turns out the Lernaean Hydra's blood was uh, uh, was poisonous. So uh, Heracles, what he did was he took his arrows and he, he, he dipped the tips in the uh, in this poisonous blood and 
he had for a very long time a nice supply of poison tipped arrows. So, so yeah, there's another labor that uh, is later on where he has to capture, not kill, just capture the, uh, uh, the guardian of the gates of Hades. And that was Cerberus. Now, if you remember, Cerberus was the dog with three heads. So what he did was he was able to go to the underworld. So Pericles can do that. He could actually take a trip to the underworld and come back. Uh, he, he captures Cerberus. He brings him he brings him to the king, Eurystheus, that he was serving. And the king jumped inside a big, a huge vase, and he was terrified and said, okay, okay, I believe, I believe you captured Cerberus, now, now bring him back to Hades, and he brought him back to Hades. So, uh, so that's another labor. I think that's his 11th or 12th labor, I don't know. So, uh, okay, let's leave Greece behind, and let's start talking about more unusual monsters, monsters you don't come across as much. Uh, in Ireland, they speak of this underwater creature by the name of the Mudris. Mudris is a very strange creature. Uh, what happens is that it, he's featured in a story uh, about King Fergus. Now, Fergus was a king of, of, uh, of Ulster. It's a province in Northern Ireland. And what he did was he was, a, he was seen as a wonderful king. Uh, he had this magical equipment in, in which he was able to, uh, in which he was able to stay underwater, breathe underwater, and he could walk along uh, the, the floors of various lakes. And uh, what he did was he, he, uh, he was told, he was told not to uh, uh, travel uh, in this particular lake. It was a feature of something very scary, but he ignored that warning. And he decided to go to this particular lake. And there he came across this creature called the Mudras. Uh, the Mudras had this, uh, it was so horrifying. It, it, it had this type of body that expanded and contracted. Um, I, I did a quick internet search of, of, of the Mudras, and apparently he also had uh, branches coming out of his body and stingers. And, and supposedly some people think he may have been inspired by jellyfish. So what happened is that uh, the Mudras didn't attack him, but apparently it, it was so horrifying that his face became distorted. His mouth actually twisted to the back of his head. Uh, but, but since he was uh, very liked, what happened is that in, in, in Celtic belief, uh, a king wasn't, was not allowed to rule if he had a blemish. But because the people liked him, uh, they didn't tell him this, and they hid all the mirrors so he wouldn't see this. Uh, you would think he'd notice that his mouth was twisted to the back of his head, but apparently he, he, he went on without knowing this. But of course, one day he was mistreating uh, a servant, and the servant got very mad and told him about the deformity to make him angry. And, uh, and when he realized that he had this deformity, he knew what he had to do. He re-enters uh, the lake with the Mudras, and uh, and after a long time with the lake boiling and seething, and you know something big is going underneath there, a dreadful battle, he rises, he rises with the head of the Mudras, and he says, this Ulster man lives, and then he drops dead. So he gets revenge on the Mudras, but then he dies. But very heroic ending. Um, uh, let's move on to another really odd creature in Mesopotamia. Now, Mesopotamia is that great land that has uh, that had those civilizations: uh, Sumer, Babylon, Assyria. In Sumer, uh, they 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 had this uh, heroic legend about uh, Gilgamesh, uh, a great king in Sumer, and uh, they spoke way of another of a of a monster. Uh, living way off in Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon is known as having these wonderful forests of cedar trees. As a matter of fact, the, the symbol of modern-day Lebanon is the cedar. And what happens is that it's believed that you had these wonderful cedar forests, and it was guarded by this monster named Huwawa. Now, Huwawa was like this giant being, he had this loud bellowing voice. You could hear him roaring through the forest. And he was described as having a very strange face. Uh, he, it was said he had the face of coiled entrails. So basically, he had a face that looked like human guts. That's pretty frightening. And what happened is that but it, uh, these stories were written down later and during Babylonian times in, in a story called the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, uh, this monster underwent a name change a little bit. He went from Huwawa to the Akkadian Humbaba. So in the story, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, to show Gilgamesh was so powerful, him and his buddy Enkidu decide to travel to, to Lebanon to confront this guardian and 
cut down some trees and bring them back to Mesopotamia, to Sumeria. And uh, so what it was is that they, they confront Humbaba, and Humbaba runs towards them with his loud voice and his face of guts. And because Gilgamesh and Enkidu are so strong, they're, able, they're actually able to subdue uh, Humbaba, who then begs for his life, actually. He, he's apparently intelligent. He could speak to them. Uh, but the two of them said, nah, and they wind up killing him. What are you going to do? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, so, that's, uh, so that's, that's the end of that story. Um, I'm going to go through briefly, because I don't want this video to get too long, I'm going to go through some random monsters, because they're rather interesting. In Europe, they speak of a monster by the name of the, the, the basilisk. The, the basilisk is actually a type of reptilian creature that, if it, uh, if it, stare, it has such piercing, fiery eyes that if it stares at you, you could turn to stone, just like Medusa can do. Um, sometimes the, bath, ba the basilisk is also called uh, something called the cockatrice. And the cockatrice actually sometimes is said to have the head of a rooster. So this, again, this strange animal combination, the head of a, the head of a rooster and, uh, and the body of a serpent. Um, in Persia, this is interesting, they speak of a monster called the manticore. Uh, the manticore is said to have the face of a human, the body of a lion, and the tail of a scorpion. And of course, this monster was uh, a big man-eater, uh, and so he was very feared because it's, uh, you know, because it would eat, it would eat a lot of humans. Um, let's see. Oh, here's an interesting one. In North America, various Native American tribes talked about a creature called the Wendigo. Um, uh, the Wendigo was a, a type of deformed human-like being who, instead of having, having a heart, it had a block of ice for a heart. And it was a very terrifying creature. Uh, the Wendigo is very interesting to me because uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember any folk tales about him, but the modern writer, uh, Organon Blackwood, wrote a very famous, uh, very scary novella called uh, called the Wendigo, which is which is really good. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, by the way, below this video, I'm going to write down books and the names of these stories, so don't worry. Um, let's see. Um, let's uh, finally, uh, I'll mention Australia. Australia has some interesting some interesting monsters. There's a there's a monster, uh, a, a type of uh, dog headed humanoid type monster that also eats humans. He has he has a wife who's also hideous, and he's got a pack of dogs that that are killer dogs, much to be afraid of. They 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 speak of a monster called the Woe, who uh, lives deep inside a cave. It has six legs and the head of a frog. Uh, he's very sluggish, so you could avoid him by the day, but at night. It creeps up to you and swallows a bunch of humans at once. Um, finally, a very a very famous monster is called the bunyip. Uh, the bunyip is uh, is an amphibious type creature. It lives in swamps, but it could climb up on land. Uh, it's described in various ways, uh, sometimes uh, hippopotamus like. It also is known for yelling loudly and uh, uh, and eating humans. Uh, you see a trend here. A lot of these monsters, they seem to make a lot of noise and eat humans. I suppose that's one of the reasons why they're called monsters. They make noise and they eat humans. If they if they ate plants, they wouldn't be nearly as scary. Uh, this led, I have a book here. Um, uh, this, is, this was a book, very interesting. It's called Deadly Powers, uh, Animal Predators and the Mythic Imagination. And it was written by a guy named Paul A. Trout. What's interesting about this book is that according to his hypothesis, uh, what happens is that a lot of these uh, uh, monsters that appear in myths and legends may have derived from uh, some, maybe some deep-seated memory we have of a time where we actually had to be afraid of being eaten by animals. Uh, going back to one, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago when we lived in caves and and uh, we had to hunt for our food and, and we had to confront various animals that could definitely kill and eat us. Uh, I don't know how much this idea is held by scholars. I don't really know. It sounds a little young. Sounds a little Jungian. I, I don't really know, uh, but it's an interesting concept, you know, that we had to, you know, maybe some of these monsters are derived from very old memories, you know. Uh, yeah, so it's something to think about. It's an interesting idea. Okay, so happy Halloween to everybody, and uh, until next time.